Right. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a high five with Praxis Glass. These guys have made some dope glass for the show before. Well, not, I'm not going to say these guys. This, this guy, guy has made some dope glass for the show. He's made some dope local heady glass in SA. And when I use the term heady, I mean like art glass. Mm. You know, function and form. Mm. So a big, a big shout out to Armand from mm. pa Praxis Glass. Hey Armand, how you doing? Hey guys. Praxis. Thank you for having me. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, the high five. The high five is a nice. I don't like it. Eh? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Praxis. Um, I guess it's my glass journey uh, into headiness. Uh, trying to represent South Africa like on the heady scene of things. Um, uh, I started out in two, 2012 up in Joburg actually. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, carry on. What made you get into yeah, it? Pretty much it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Started in 2012, but it came down this way and made my own way through it. Um, through YouTube videos and whatnot. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> what made you want to start playing with glass? Yeah. Uh, obviously, as a stone, I always had a fascination with um, paraphernalia and wanted to know like how they were made and that sort of stuff. Um, and so it was actually a school project that led me to investigating but further into glass blowing and that sort of stuff. And that led to my dad asking around, uh, like phoning around like glass blowing companies in South Africa, just like diving through the yellow pages and came across like this toppy in uh, Springs of all places, Springs, Joburg. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just like making scientific glassware and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I, I packed up and moved up there straight out of high school. Lived with the toppy for about six months, seven months, until he figured out that I was blowing pipes right under, underneath his nose. <laughs> and I was just <laughs> away. Uh, it's quite, a, it's quite an art form as well, bro. Have you always been um, quite a creative person when it comes to like, other arts? Uh, I... I would say my mom probably nurtured that, like in me, like like the creative. I wouldn't say I was born that way necessarily, but my right, mom definitely right. like nudged me in that direction to like um, be more creative and expressive or whatever. So, um, yeah, I guess when 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 particularly came down to that project and everyone was like doing research on becoming lawyers and doctors <laughs> and uh, you know like ordinary professions, I was just like. How did you yeah. come up with the name Praxis Glass? What, where does what what come? Where does that come from? Uh, actually, originally started out as Ritual Glass. Um, like I thought, the, the, I know like the, the idea of ritual like kind of sounds quite scary to 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 people. Like it involves like I don't know the cult or something like that, but. I just thought, thought it quite fitting because, I mean, a lot of people smoke, you know, quite habitually. It's like part of their daily routine, brings them, you know, it like centers them and people also do it like together, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I just thought that quite fitting. But um, after a year or two of, of that, I thought, nah, I think it's time to change it up. And I was looking around for words and the one day I was actually reading a, a political article on some random ANC political article and the word praxis was in there and it just caught my eye and I had to go look it up and I just loved the meaning. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah the, I can't really kind of like think of the, the precise definition right now, but it comes down to like just the practice of anything really, whether it be a science or an art or magic or whatever, but practicing something. Do it. Well, I love your work like a lot, and I've been it, since we received this particular rig from you. I've started like googling and looking around, and I'm now trying to convince one of my children, at least, to please get into glass blowing. So if I ever did convince them, oh, how, yes. where do they go? Where do they start? What do they do? Um, like. Uh at the moment, I'm not I'm not set up to to be able like I've only got the one torch that torch that you guys see behind me here, yeah. um, but in the future I'd love to have additional stations where I can actually have people come over and we can have like collaborations and that sort of stuff. Um, but for the time being, it would es essentially mean like getting your own small little torch. Uh, you'd probably need about I'd say 
10 to 20,000 Rand in capital to get into it. Okay. Um, and then YouTube videos. There's really a lot, like very in depth, like two, three, eight hour workshops that they really dial into what what exactly the artists are doing and that sort of stuff. And that's been incredibly informative. With, without YouTube, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't. I call it the University the of YouTube. That it's because that's exactly what it is. You can learn pretty much anything if you yeah. work hard enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you mentioned that you do, you only need what ten to twenty thousand to start. The glass in the glass blowing industry, yeah. That's equipment. For equipment. Yeah, is that, that's for, that's is that for a version. torch and for basic hand tools? Because I mean, I've yeah. I've only heard that those uh, torches that they use, that you see the glass blowers using, are mega expensive, like a hundred k or more. And I obviously, you know, yeah. What would you say is is on definitely yeah, on on the higher end of the scale? Yeah, yeah, it can definitely get up there, but. Uh, there are torches like the Bethlehem, um, like that. That's a Bethlehem Bravo, which is essentially the mid-range. That goes for about 15k these days. I bought that for about 10 back in the day. Um, but you get a, a, a entry level beneath that called the Alpha, and that goes for about, I think, about 4,000 rand before shipping it in and that sort of stuff. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I mean, there are definitely ways, to, and even that is. That's like a quality burner. You could get other burners that are even cheaper. Um, is everything uh, there's the imported Red Max, or... for instance. I think that's a bit cheaper. Sorry, is yeah, everything, everything is imported, or... unfortunately. Yeah, no, no. Local... yeah, that's a delay. Ah. Um, so there's a gap yeah, in the I'm, industry, yeah, guys. That's one of the things. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's been a mission figuring out like how to to import shit and like how to do it rather reliably and not have shit get lost all the time and wait two three months for stuff from the states and that sort of stuff. But if you can get over that hurdle, which I'm more than willing to help people walk walk them through that through that as well, if they contact me, um, yeah, then you're pretty much set. Then it's just playing around and putting in the hours. That's it. And how long does it take you to make like a dab rig or a bomb? So, for instance, this this rig that's up for auction, I've put a little. Uh, it's a dirty uh, banger and um, what you name it and just to constrict the flow and whatnot but this i'd say you're looking at about two to two and a half days um but i mean okay. yeah it it, it, it really but, varies but i mean something simpler well, that isn't yeah. as intricate <clears throat> as that this might take you like a day for instance mm -hmm. even though it's got color in it and stuff it's it's all these tricky seals on this thing these are all called gill seals for instance so all the all the glassware has been fused together. There aren't any loose tubes on this thing. It's called, it's a recycler, but at the same time, everything's like the down stem is fused to the body. Mm. Yes. The only thing that's loose is a perk inside. And further than that, even the, the, the splashback here, it's all fused hmm. together with two little gill seals. Wow. Awesome. So there's some, some good work inside that rig. Wow. looks absolutely awesome. People must go and... Yeah, get on that. How does the auction work? No, you said yeah. there's an auction for it, right? Yeah, how does the auction work? That's it, yeah. It's, it's ongoing. We're going to be, f uh, well, I'm going to be finishing that off tomorrow for 20 p.m. local time. Awesome. Okay. And what's the deal with it, yeah. though? Uh, the, someone's actually, uh, oh, I've got to get my words right here. It's African Voodoo 420. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just sort of interjected like a day or two into the auction, and they were just like, uh, we wanted to do something similar, but we we thought we might as well just add what we were going to put up for for the giveaway to to raise funds to your uh, stuff. So they added an email into the doll package. So now it's not just the rig, but it's an email, which I believe comes with a uh, obviously with your banger, and it even comes with a little dabber and everything. So it's like the complete wow. connoisseur's kit, if you will. Wow, that is actually If you're into smoking hash, this this will be yeah, a dream kit, <laughs> hopefully. Jeez. Hmm. That looks good. I'm not going to lie, that email will probably be a bit porno on there, though. Oh, we love it porno. <laughs> 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 with a little I myself, porno. Also, I'm, not, I'm not too huge on the email uh, story, but uh, I mean, it's got its time and its place, I guess, especially mm. for conventions and that sort of stuff. Or if you've got a fat sesh with a bunch of people smoking. Look, I'm sure the technology of the email is still going to, you know, thin down and... Yeah, they'll slim out. Yeah. I mean, remember it's still new, also a relatively. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. I mean, there's, the, there's already yeah. that uh, G-Pen, right, from uh, Snoop Dogg's endorsing it. It's like this tiny little thing. And then you load your dab into that and you put it right into yeah. your rig and yes. you, uh, yeah, it bobs your uncle. Mm. That's it. So, yeah. That's it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a great time to be alive. But tell me, uh, what's the? Is there a dream uh, with Praxis? You know, uh, where? What's what's your? Where would you ideally like to be blowing glass? What would you be like, like to be blowing er day? Uh, yeah, well, uh, so far that's that's what I've been doing for the past like uh, year or two. But I mean. Going forward, I just want to see the whole thing blossom. I want to be, see more glass blowers. I want to see friendly competition. I want to see South Africa properly being represented, you know, like on the glass blowing scene, I guess. I mean, even Russia is up there at the moment. I mean, we're really lagging. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I would just, I'd love to be part of that, really. Mm. Uh. We need to create a bit of a bigger, a more active glass blowing community. Start That's the thing, yeah, no, for sure. No, I hear you. Vibes. Yeah. I think that comes down to more people getting into the dabbing side of things mm. because, you know, you would never mm. want to take a rig like this and smoke some flour through it, I don't believe, unless you've got some serious ash catches before because mm -hmm. it just really ruins it. Like, mm. smoking bongs mm. ruins yeah. the glass. This is for dabs, and we, we need to just get the dabbing community bigger and people need to try it out. And, make, and if they have access to rigs, which they now do because we have local blowers like you and we have, you know, people selling them, It'll come. It'll happen. It will happen. It's Notice gonna, some talent and then blow yeah. the rest of the world's minds away. Are there any other local glass artists that you know of? Or are there any international glass artists to inspire you? That there are actually a couple of glass artists locally. Um, there's... Uh, there's Snake in the Glass on Instagram, for instance, Ben DeVette. He's from, uh, where is it now, uh, Plettenberg Bay. And um, he's he's been blowing on and off. I don't think he's practicing at the moment. Uh, last time I, I checked, he was in Ecuador. Um, and then I think in the meantime, he's been back, but I don't think he's been on the torch. Uh, then there's obviously Skunk Glass. I don't know if you guys have heard of Skunk Glass in Cape Town. Mm. She makes mostly straws, and I think she makes the odd pipe and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's. And then I've heard I've heard of like the the odd rumor. I've heard of like uh, like uh, people that go around in Cape Town to the trance events over there and blow glass for the people live and sell pipes. And I've heard there's a dude in Naisna selling that blows pipes and sells pipes, but he works for a rehab, so he needs to keep it on the down low or something <laughs> like that. So I guess there are <laughs> I know. So I guess there are people out there in the woodwork. It's uh, whether whether they're willing to be public or not is I guess a different thing. Yeah, hmm. that is it. Derek also says on Facebook to check out Edible D's old glass stuff too. I haven't heard of that. Oh, I'm wow. just mentioning it. Uh, local Somebody person. mentioned it on Facebook. <clears throat> so, uh, Arman, thank you very much for joining us on this mm. week's High Five. Uh, please, folks, go check out Praxis Glass. We've put out the link in the bottom. Yeah. Uh, Arman, I know you're on Instagram. Anywhere else we can follow you? Uh, I'm pretty much just focusing on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really fo uh, like active on uh, Facebook at all. But yeah, Instagram all the way and then obviously my website but yeah you'll follow that through instagram excellent cool thanks 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 thank you so much for having me on man could you really, answer this week's zol poll for us have you ever smuggled something uh, <laughs> no 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 not across the border so no no excellent <laughs> Cool, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stay lit. Enjoy the rest Thanks a of lot. Your evening. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Sure. It, I really got into like enjoying glass. Yeah. Through, through Jules's enthusiasm yeah. for it, I yeah, think, oh, especially man. when he came across Armand and Praxis, he was just so excited. I think part of my dream of trying to talk one of my kids into doing it was so that we could build. A glass studio here for Jules on his own farm. So maybe one day we will still. <laughs> Check this dope Ricky made fire side. Yeah, it's this with the dry coldies on the side. The mushroom. You can show us on the table cam as well. Yeah, the desk cam. The desk cam is a better light. Yeah, man. So.